So hello and good afternoon. I welcome everyone to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here on Friday, the 21st of February 2020. Uh, yeah, my name is Jens Klatt and um, we want to dig into um, an interesting strategy, I think, which is very interesting, especially for those uh, using indicators within their trading um, oscillators like the MACD or the Stochastic. Um, yeah, and uh, I want to present to you some thoughts on this, not just introduce those two indicators to you, but also how to combine them and probably use them in your trading. So I was about to, uh, um, to ask whether everything's fine with the audio and everyone can see the screen, but um, I've seen now a good afternoon uh, in the chat box, which means, indicates at least that um, everyone can hear me well and the screen should be fine too. So uh, yeah, then let's just get started and uh, let's have a look at today's agenda. Um, so as I, as I already said, so first thing we want to do is uh, we want to introduce the MACD and the stochastic, um, give an idea of what's behind um, those two indicators, even though we want, don't want to dig into the uh, formulas um, those two indicators are calculated on or something. Um, still, we want to give a, a short, a quick explanation and then why and what they aim for to capitalize on and also then to uh, see why these two indicators work very well with each other. So um, I put it differently. So uh, one is a momentum-based um, um, indicator. The other one is um, good for trending markets or, or um, I'm seeing trending environments and try to capitalize them on. So just imagine now you have, uh, let's say, momentum trading approach and you try to um, capitalize on this with an indicator which works extremely well under range bound trading conditions, for example. So at the end of the day, you will probably end up with lots of um, um, signals which are not worth anything due to the fact that our range bound indicators, for example, have a tendency to show oversold, overbought market conditions, which means that in the momentum uh, um, environment, just look at the current developments in JPY crosses, for example, in the FX market, um, you will definitely end up with lots of these overbought, oversold market conditions. So this is something you have to make sure that those um, uh, two indicators you're looking at here um, work well with each other. And this is the case in case of the MACD and Stochastic. Um, yeah, and then I want to show you the strategy um, you, could, you could try here and also give an example on the real market data and how it works in the, in the real world. Before we start, um, this is me, so Jens Klatt, that's the name I already said it at the beginning. Um, again, as usual, I don't want to dig too deep into um, my career in the financial markets. What's probably the most interesting thing, and this is something which is especially important when looking at the um, broker, which makes all this here possible, Opera Markets, in a few um, um, seconds. Um, I'm located in Berlin, in Germany, and um, why is this of importance? Well, it's because of the fact that Admiral has, for example, an office right here in the uh, capital of, of Germany. Um, and it's not the only office, um, but it's one of over 20 offices Admiral has worldwide. So it's a true worldwide um, broker, which, which um, um, offers services around the globe, which is not just FCA regulated, so from the UK regulatory body here, but it's also regulated, for example, from the CISEC. This is especially important when it comes to Brexit um, and the question, hard Brexit, soft Brexit, how will everything work out here? So um, they're well positioned due to having um, also a new regulation then in this case, so that all clients not um, need, don't need to worry where they are located and under which um, a new restriction they have their, their account opened. Um, there's also the ASIC regulation, so worldwide, in this case, Europe, UK, okay. Um, this, is, this is the European country uh, or European continent in this case. ASIC is the um, Australian regulatory body, um, which means there's also an office. There's also an office in Chile, for example. So um, why is this of importance? Well, 20 offices around the globe, there's a very, very high chance that you get someone um, within your email correspondence or when you call Admiral who speaks your um, mother tongue, your, your, your native language, uh, which is especially important when it comes to financial services in general. And on top of that, also something I'd um, uh, like to mention is the highly competitive offering which Admiral has. So it's not only over 8,000 financial instruments, 
and um, being a true multi-asset broker, but it's also that the um, products being offered are highly competitive when it comes to costs, commission, and everything. So here in Germany, for example, especially when it comes to DAX trading, most traded asset, um, when it comes to CFDs, with the highest volume um, compared to other, other financial instruments, so way over 70%, in fact, data shows here, um, is that Admiral has probably the most competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading um, in, uh, in, in, the, in the CFD industry. Um, and that alone, is it worth to give it a deeper look here? Check out admiralmarkets.com for further details. Um, I also like to mention FX trading, especially when it comes to the Admiral Prime offering. They have highly competitive, very, very tight spreads. Um, which is very, very important from a cost perspective. So especially when looking at it from a, from a professional trading perspective, costs of trading are highly important you know, to everyone because as, or especially if you're more active in trading. That's, by the way, I, I just have an idea. Why not doing a webinar in this on the Trading Spotlight webinar? I have to, let me just take a note probably. Um, so this is, this is probably of interest and why, why this is of, of, of importance. Let me just write this down. So Spotlight uh, Commission webinar. That's a good idea. Why not? Okay. So, um, yeah. <laughs> now let's start with the uh, with the topic. So that's it on on uh, on um, um, the introduction. Let's now introduce the one of the main indicators we want to look at here, the uh, MACD in this case. So. <clears throat> You probably heard about the MACD already. Um, so it's the uh, yeah MACD or MACD or um, some might say moving average convergence divergence. Um, so obviously you can see MACD is short for for moving average convergence divergence. Um, and you can you can see when when looking at the MACD uh, that's obviously a trend following trend capturing momentum indicator. Uh, that's can, that can be to some extent already seen uh, in the explanation here. Moving average, this is usually um, um, a sign that we are looking at something which has something to do with trends. So this is usually a good indication. Um, and convergence, divergence means there's sometimes a divergence and then uh, those uh, uh, lines you're looking at here, they converge again. Um, and uh, so what, what the MACD does, in fact, is that it shows the relationship between two moving averages of price. But the inter interesting thing now is it's not that you take the moving average of a moving average, but you subtract one moving average from the other. So, okay, there is, uh, there's a word missing. So it subtracts the daily EMA 26 um, and here subtracts, it is subtracted from the EMA 12 in, case, uh, in this case. And that results in getting a so-called histogram. I will show this to you in a chart a little later on. And then, in addition to that, you um, have a daily EMA 9 in this case, so an exponential moving average, also a moving average in this case, but on an exponentially uh, basis. Um, 9 in this case, this is the aggregation, uh, which acts in this case as the signal line, marking triggers for buy and sell signals in this case. Um, and now, here is the chart, and there you can see it. It's um, just one example. It's Aussie against the JPY in this case. Um, and here you have the MACD being displayed. So those columns um, in yeah, gray, black, whatever, you can see here, <clears throat> These columns are, uh, or this is the, the subtraction of those two exponential moving averages. By the way, let me just open a window here. There we go. Uh, so this is this is where you get the the histogram from, um, and then the in this case here EMA nine, this is the the standard aggregation let's call this, um, is acting as a signal line. So uh, once it breaks, for example, back above zero in this case, it creates a bias. It could could be interpreted as that creating a buy signal, respectively, if the histogram here shows uh, a negative value. And then we have the um, 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 red dotted line here, so the EMA 9, crossing below the, uh, the, the, the uh, zero line 2, you get a sell signal. So if you now look here with a vertical line, this is about here, this is where you enter the short trade then, simply, simply um, 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 sad or in very, 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 very easily set, roughly um, um, put. Um, so there's, this is where you sell, and then you wait till it crosses back here above the 
the zero line, which means that somewhere here, you probably take out the trade for a small profit in this case. And if it crosses back again, you start to take out um, the, the position, uh, well, take a short position again, trade with the momentum, in this case, a short trade. Um, and the other way around, certainly. It doesn't work really well, um, or let's say the complete opposite. It doesn't work well at all. Um, under range bound market conditions. So what you need is definitely trend. You need momentum in one direction. And this is where this indicator um, works quite, quite nice. Then. So that's it around the MACD. Um, probably, as I already said, by the way, that's probably important to say, you don't need to download it um, uh, from, from an external source or something. So this is usually a standard indicator, which you find within your trading station. So in the MetaTrader, MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5, um, this is a standard indicator. You just go to, um, yeah, what is it? Is it, is it indicators? I'm, I'm not sure about the, the top uh, at the header within the middle trader, but just click there, go down, and then have a look. Probably it's below uh, trend, probably it's below oscillator, but um, somewhere there you will definitely find it. So yeah, and that's it on the, on the MACD. The same is true um, in regards to being a standard indicator and being um, available within your trading station uh, or within your meta trader in this case um, for the slow stochastic. So you, you have to be careful here a little because there is the slow stochastic, there is also the fast stochastic. We're looking here at the slow stochastic in this case. Um, and yeah, when it comes to the stochastic, it, it's also a so-called momentum indicator. So uh, it is range bound. Um, zero to 100 here by default and then it swings between those two numbers here, high and low. It oscillates between them. By the way, one second, please. Here I am again. So it oscillates between those two values. And uh, that shows the location of the close relative to the high-low range of a set number of periods. So which means um, the um, uh, lower the numbers um, are, the, the more um, what's the word? Volatile is probably the right word, but also the more sensitive um, this oscillator reacts to price action moves. So, for example, um, you probably have seen the slow stochastic in an aggregation of 533, for example. Um, we will use it in a 1444, uh, which means our aggregation is, per definition, not as sensitive to price changes in the market as the um, very um, um, short 533, for example. Um, so, and when looking at the slow stochastic, you're having two lines. So, one is the slow oscillating percentage K line. How to, the, um, 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 uh, to, how to calculate it? This is something we want to skip here. We don't want to get too theoretically. We, we want to focus more on um, how, the, how the strategy works and also why those two indicators work exceptionally well with each other. And then you have a moving average of the percentage K, and this is what we will refer to as percentage D in this case. Um, and this is then how it looks. In this case, it's in fact the 533 aggregation. Um, and you can see here that, that you have after quick moves in one or the other direction. Here also we have the, the Australian JPY as an example. You have after sharp moves in one or the other direction um, fairly quickly oversold in this case or here also overbought um, um, market conditions. And um, to smoothen this out, let's say, uh, it makes more sense to, to switch to a higher aggregation in this case. And this is exactly what we want to do here. Um, but before we combine the slow stochastic and the um, MACD here, uh, within the trading strategy, we want to answer this question again here. Why do the indicators work together so well? Um, and I already said it at the um, introduction of the webinar. So, um, in fact, this is most of it now. What I, what I have to say is uh, something I have to repeat here. The stochastic oscillator is a momentum indicator, while the MACD is a trend-following, trend-capturing momentum indicator. So, um, in fact, if someone asks me, for example, what kind of trader am I? Um, I'm a combination guy, let's say. So I uh, follow trends. It's um, Most of the time, I'm a pro-cyclical position. Um, most of the time, I have to admit, is uh, it depends, in my case, 
based on um, the relativeness to the um, um, to the to the to or to n exponential moving average. To give you a better idea of that, let me just um, switch over to our Traders Yard community. So probably this is um, better in regards to explanation here. So what we have here. It's a setup from uh, in the morning. So by the way, uh, let me just share this uh, link for us uh, here within the, let's call it TYC. It's short for Traders Yard Community. Um, and there I have here one example. Let me just see. It should enlarge this the chart. Uh, enlarge. <laughs> okay. So um, what do we have here? So we have um, 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 the DAX on a, on a five minute time frame. Today was, by the way, not such a beautiful day uh, due to the fact that we were stopped into the trade on the short side and then taken out quickly afterwards after some uh, quite surprising positive um, PMIs for Germany and especially here the manufacturing sector were published. The interesting thing about this is that uh, I still think that um, we are headed for a recession here in Germany and also the numbers there were just better than expected but still below this very important um, mark of 50 points uh, which is usually indicating that if you come in the data comes in below that that um, the, the overall economy is in a recession mode, in fact, where the sector which you are looking at here, in this case, the manufacturing sector, which is um, um, extremely important to the German economy in general. But um, now let's focus here on the on the setup. So what do I mean when I'm pro-cyclical positioned? So what you can see in this case here is that the market has a sequence of falling highs and falling lows. Certainly we have probably it's better to zoom in a little and then you would see uh, that we had some topish tendency let's call it over the last days but um, what then happens is that I take the position in relation to the exponential moving average 50 uh, which means if we're trading below I'm only trading breakouts in direction of the overall trend which already says, um, shows and this is what I want to um, come to here and what I want to explain in, in my case of trading, it's a combination. It's a trend following approach at one hand and it's a breakout approach at the other. So the setup itself um, is generating a signal based on a breakout approach while um, the overall advantage plays a crucial role in regards to in which direction I should take um, the signal then when it comes to a breakout. So it could be, for example, that the market presents itself quite volatile, even though um, when looking at the overall um, um, environment, for example, when looking at an hourly chart right now in the DAX, the, the hourly chart then is the direct dominator of the five minute time frame. Um, you will see that everything which happens above 12, uh, I'm sorry, 13,580 to 13,600 13, points could be um, considered bullish. So it's still, I'm when looking at this dominating time frame, I'm still willing to take short trades. And uh, this is because of the fact that I'm more flexible, uh, where especially I'm, I'm also trading here the lower time frame in this case. And there, it could be that we have a sequence of falling highs and falling lows, where it's in this case, trading below the exponential moving average 50 and take short signals. But all in all, um, it all comes down to my trading is a combination of both. Um, it's trend following and it's momentum trading to some extent also, but also it's, it's breakout trading, which is then to some extent a momentum trading approach in my opinion, um, um, especially because um, breakout, um, 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 uh, breakout setups tend to work fairly well during uh, market environments which have elevated volatility and or um, um, momentum in one or the other direction. And that's why um, this comes or this goes hand in hand. And that's one of the reasons why, and let's go back now to this um, MAC, M MACD um, 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 slow stochastic um, oscillator, why these indicators work well with each other. So at first, this is probably something where also you can see that um, um, knowing yourself well and trading psychology to some extent is important. You have to find out what kind of guy am I? So what, what kind of trader am I? So where do I work or what do I work well together with? And after you answered this question, you probably found out that you're um, uh, someone who, yeah, who, who, who waits for breakouts to happen and then tries to capture the resulting momentum. If you know that, 
uh, then you can say, okay, if I want to capitalize on that, I now have to see which indicators do work well with this approach. In this case, then, as I already pointed out, it, it makes sense to combine the stochastic, stochastic here as a momentum indicator with the MACD as a trend following, trend capturing momentum indicator because both are headed in the same direction. That makes perfectly sense to combine these two. Um, while, for example, when you're looking for, for, for a trading approach, which is range bound, um, to some extent, certainly you could also work with the stochastic and the MACD, but you have to, um, um, you, you have to make adapt, uh, adoptions to your, to your overall approach then. Probably it's even better to work with an indicator like the relative strength, the RSI, which is not here within this, within this um, 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 uh, a strategy respectively, which does not play such a big role in my opinion, because it's um, an indicator which works quite well during um, trendless, respectively, range bound market conditions, um, and does not fit this trend or momentum capturing approach really well. Okay, so then our target with both indicators then is that we integrate them in a trend confirmation strategy. So what we want to achieve is we want to trade trends um, and try to um, 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 get the most out of this trend as possible, um, helped or but being supported in this case from the stochastic and the um, MACD indicator in this case. So let's just um, um, give a bullish scenario in this case then as, um, as, as, um, as an example. So let's say we have a bullish MACD with the histogram of greater zero. So this is something I already mentioned. So once this histogram is above the zero line, you have an usually bullish market environment. And then you're waiting for uh, this, this signal line to generate a bullish signal by crossing back above the zero line too. So which means here, this, this, is, this is the MACD line then, okay? So there's, just let's go back again here. So this is the moment when we cross from below zero to above zero. This is usually when you see um, um, a buying signal being generated then in this case. So, and now, and that reason here, I put this um, not in yeah, bold to some extent, so at least with, with capital letters here. Um, we need this bullish environment in the MACD confirmed, we need to see this being confirmed here in the slow stochastic, where we want to see a so-called bullish divergence in the slow stochastic, the percentage value passes the pa percentage D confirming, um, I, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, I, I thought that there's, there's, a, there's a word missing, but it's not necessarily true. Percentage K value passes the percentage D value in this case, um, and this would confirm a likely price turnaround and we expect the bullish momentum to continue. So to give you a better idea on uh, what is a bullish divergence, also bearish divergence. So this is a bullish scenario. You can um, just mirror that and then you will get um, a bearish scenario too here. So just to, to um, um, point out what's, what's a bullish divergence. Bullish divergence is usually something we refer to um, once the market, in this case the price of, of the uh, respective asset, in this case um, Aussie JPY, makes a new low and this is not confirmed by the oscillator. So what you then get to see is usually a tendency where the market here makes lower lows while I just found out that's probably not so nice right now. Um, let me just think about a better example because here in this case, the slow stochastic is not showing this really well. Let me just let me just think about this a little. Um, where did I have a bearish, bearish divergence occurring? I have an idea. I have an idea. Just wait a second. We go to the website. It's some um, admiralmarkets.com. Let's go here and let's have a look at the um, DAX in the uh, or from from last Monday. There was a technical piece which. Um, which was published here under admiralmarkets.com analytics and there the technical analysis tab. So usually here you find a piece every Monday, every Wednesday and every Friday. Um, so last was dollar JPY after this huge breakout here from Wednesday already and there we have it. So here's the DAX, this is from Monday. Now let me just see, but usually 
we should have it here. This is perfect, yes. This is this is perfect. No, let's just okay, that's not so let me just see. Do we get something here? Okay. So now um let me get this that way. So it's not very nice what I do right now, but it's better for you to understand. So in this case, it's the RSI I'm looking at here. So if I um, um, use the RSI, then I usually uh, use it, even though I'm a trend following, respectively momentum trader, I use it for um, um, displaying uh, a diminishing momentum in the respective direction. So for example, if I'm trading um, with the momentum, I want to be well positioned once I expect the momentum to keep up or to, to take on further momentum and, and see a strong move in my direction. Um, and I become careful once there are signs and, and, and um, yeah, signs intensify that the market is probably losing some of this momentum. And therefore the RSI um, can be or it works pretty well. So what does this mean? It means that the market here, let me just probably take a blue, or no, a black one, a black is better. So you usually see that in this case, the market here, that's by the way, horrible what I just did. <laughs> so usually you see the market making higher highs or slightly higher highs, and these are not confirmed here within this indicator anymore. So usually you see the market going up, while the indicator tops out and, and, and shows, or not just tops out, but, but you see um, a, falling, um, 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 a falling, falling sign or, or the market here, obviously not, or the, the indicator not making higher highs. It's usually not a sign that the market will turn around, but at least it's a sign the market is, moment, is losing momentum in the uh, direction here. So this is usually what we refer to as a divergence. In this case, it's the so-called bearish divergence. If the same is happening here on the downside with the market making new lows, um, not sure if this is here true, but let's assume it is, um, and, and you get something to see here like that, so that, the, that this, these lower lows in the market are not confirmed within the RSI, then you have a so-called bullish divergence. So this is usually what we refer to as bullish or bearish divergence, and it's a, um, a very, very great um, way to, to see um, signs of losing or, or diminishing momentum in one or the other direction um, way before the market then finally tops out and probably sees a sharper drop. So there are also times when this just does not happen because such a divergence could also be, um, uh, what, how do we say that? It, it, it could be reduced or it, it, it doesn't necessarily play out with, with the sharp drop, but it could also be that the market continues to trade sideways. As it, By the way, here we're looking at the DAX. This is currently, the DAX is currently doing exactly that. Um, and so that's also a way to, to build or, or um, um, to, to lose a bullish or bearish divergence in this case. Um, then most likely with the market rather sooner or later breaking out here and confirming um, the, the overall trend, which is on the downside. But just to make long things short, this is what we usually refer to, this is what we usually refer to when talking about divergences. So, and now, <clears throat> What we do in, in case of the slow stochastic, there's something else, what we refer to as divergence. And this is when here, the percentage K value passes the percentage D confirming and is, is showing a likely um, 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 a turnaround in this case. So when going back to this indicator, it means nothing more than the blue line, which is our percentage um, um, percentage K um, a value here, it's crossing back ab above the percentage D value, indicating a bullish divergence and likely um, showing a potential turnaround or the market finally having found the bottom and continuing with the initial momentum in the right direction. Remember, this is what we are looking at here when looking at the MACD. So in fact, let me just probably put it that way. So. We have a trend which develops in one direction and there's strong momentum. And once you get to see such a corrective move, this will likely result in the slow stochastic then to see a push lower and the percent K line dropping below the percent D line. And once the market 
bottoms out respectively shows momentum again in the initial direction and moving higher from here you can get to see this percentage k line then passing back above the percentage d line this is how you could see this from a pure price action perspective what's happening there so in fact there are some yeah what well, let's call them probably purists or um pure price action traders they say i don't need an indicator because um what the indicator shows you it's not what will likely happen in the past, but it collects data from uh, what will happen in the future. But it collects data from the past, which is then displayed within an indicator, and you could bet, or you, you would be better off by just looking at the price action yourself, at the asset price, and not at an indicator um, where, where, which, which shows you something which is derived from the um, initial chart and the, the price action. Um, but however you put it, at the end of the day, it all comes down to um, if it helps your trading and it becomes um, or for your for trading it has a positive it has a positive effect on your trading and and you become more profitable with that I mean um, at the end of the day you should um, you should go for it then right so and this is then what we have then so we have um, a bullish MACD with the histogram bigger zero and the MACD line which crosses back above zero and then once we see this bullish divergence in case of a slow stochastic which is um, illustrated by the percent K value passing back through the percent D um, 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 value or line, whatever you put it, um, then you have bullish momentum or you expect bullish momentum, the bullish momentum to continue then in direction of uh, the initial trend. So, <clears throat> and now what I have here is a real world example. Um, even though I have to admit it's a very simple example because at the end of the day, we're looking at an Apple chart um, so Apple on a on a on a daily um, um, uh, on a daily time frame. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. No, it's in the next the next slide. But you will see uh, we are looking at a long um, engagement here, and some probably will smile and say, "Okay, um, I it would have been uh, a big surprise if the strategy didn't work uh, with Apple here on the long side, because this would have been um, one of the few uh, in this case trend following bullish um, uh, um, um, strategy." Well, uh, bullish bullish um, signals being provided which didn't work out in, in the Apple environment because Apple seems to rise every time all the way just up and and from the the lower left to the upper right but um, I just want to illustrate how it works so we will use this what I just present to you here right now in this slide <clears throat> and put this then on the on the chart and um, feel free to probably also um, screenshot this slide here and use this then um, on a chart of your of your favorite asset of your favorite FX pair index gold whatever precious metal commodities like WTI whatever um, and, and and test it yourself whether it works for you and it makes sense to you um, so let's now have a look here on how the double cross strategy works so we have the MACD which is used with the aggregation of 12 26 and 9 so one second once again please So here I am again. Okay, so this is the um, so-called standard aggregation. So once you once you open um, the uh, the um, MACD here within your MT4 MT5, you will see that this is the standard aggregation. Um, you have to nevertheless do some uh, adaptations um, here in case of the slow stochastic, which here we use in the aggregation of fourteen four four. In this case so again this is smoothened out a little so it's not 533 where you have a very mm, yeah is that very sensitive um, um slow stochastic here but this is a smoothened out version then and um, now let's have a look here at the long scenario um, again we can um or we we, we should probably um, um, also make this a topic then for bear scenario in this case we want to focus on long scenario um, also due to the, the current market environment makes the most sense probably, but you can mirror this and then find out about the bearish or short scenario in this case uh, the same way. So here we have a bullish MACD here in 12.26.9. This is the standard aggregation. And there you have the histogram, which is bigger zero. So the um, uh, vertical lines are on the, or above the zero line here. And the MACD line crosses above zero two. And you have a slow stochastic here, aggregation 14.44, where the percentage K value passes the percentage D value in this case. And um, 
we enter the asset we are looking at then on the opening price of the next occurring candle stop below the last identifiable candle. So this is in fact the setup. Um, and then we keep the trade open till there is a counter signal being generated, which means in this case that the percentage K value passes um, um, back below the percentage D one way and or depending on market conditions, the MACD here with the histogram switching to lower zero, respectively the MACD line crossing below zero too. Um, for the short scenario, probably um, um, just, just to make sure that we, that we made this a topic, even though I ha don't have it in, in written form here. So the short scenario is we have a bearish MACD, which means that the standard MACD here has a histogram um, um, lower zero and the MACD line crosses below zero too and a slow stochastic here, 1444, um, where it, you have a slow stochastic where the percentage K value here passes uh, below the percentage D value. So it crosses from above to lower, okay? So this is the, the short scenario. In this case then, um, you have the opening price it's in the, at the next occurring candle. Um, let's say we, we trade this on H1, so hourly chart, then um, you look at the opening price of the next H1 candle. You not enter, enter a trade before um, the um, um, candle has closed. That's very, very important. Um, <clears throat> and then you place the stop in case of a, of a short scenario above the last identifiable candle. So let's have a look here at the Apple chart, as I already introduced to you again. We look at the long scenario here, um, and it would come as a big surprise that you, you don't make money with this strategy within such a, such a strength, strong trending um, um, market environment. But I'm here to um, um, illustrate the strategy. And this is something which is also very, very important. It um, should also uh, or only be um, understood or, or interpreted, what I, what I present to you here, as um, some thoughts you use then for your trading and where you have to prove yourself. Does it work with me? Um, am I that kind of guy who's looking for momentum strategies, for example? And if it does, if, and if you are the guy, and if, you, if you're comfortable trading this, then the testing begins. And then you take this input here, you adopt accordingly to your, to your needs, to your personal situation. Some of you probably say, um, I have a, I have a, um, a nine to five job and I, I'm in the office, I can't trade. I probably can um, enter um, an order before I, I um, go to work here, in this case, we would look at the, at the daily chart and then I would, I would go to work. Some of you say I'm sitting in front of the screen and I think there's also, let's call it more meat to be made or you can, you can make more money with a highly profitable setup, whether it is such a setup under um, um, your given situation, under the given indicator or aggregation of the indicator you're using um, within the asset you're trading. Okay, this, this is something I can't say uh, with, with certainty, but some of you probably say, I have the time to sit in front of the screen, so I can trade it here on M5, which is probably a little too, um, 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 too, too uh, highly frequent, um, but M15, for example. So this, this is something you need to find out yourself. So in this case, again, we, we look here at Apple, um, we look at the daily chart in the Apple CV in this case, um, and so what now happens is that you can see here those, those lines um, coming in where you have um, a signal being generated. This is the, this line here. And then you have here um, the signal being generated to take, take the trade off, okay? So why do we enter the long trade here with then the opening price of the next um, um, daily candle? It is because we have, in this case, the histogram bigger zero so these, these um, vertical lines here on the upside are above zero. And you have also the signal line, the MACD signal line, I'm um, trading above zero too. So the first, um, 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 the first aspect is given or the, the first, the first uh, um, how can I say that? The first, yeah, signal is confirmed. Um, and then you have the, here in this case, percentage um, um, K line, which is crossed by the percent D line in this case, I'm uh, sorry, percent K crosses the percent D line in this case. So you enter the trade here and um, you're exiting the trade because now here the percent K is crossing back below the percent D. So it's a quick 
trade, in fact, still with the small profit, you can see this within here. Um, um, so there was, there was a higher, higher high, while here, this is then the low where you place your stop. This is very important. So you enter the trade and you place the stop accordingly below the last identifiable candle in this case. Um, yeah, and you keep the trade open, obviously, as long as the counter signal here within the indicator in one or the other is, uh, is, is, is generated. So here we have a longer trade now. Um, again, histogram positive, greater zero. We have the um, signal line trading above zero two. And then you have here again, the percent K crossing above the percent D in this case, generating a long signal. You enter the trade at the next opening price of the um, 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 of, of the next opening day candle in this case. You place the stop below the last identifiable pattern in the um, um, a candle in this case. You place it below here, this candle uh, corresponding with this blue line, the vertical one. And then you keep the trade open as long as the percent um, K is not crossing below the percent D. So here there was small um, it was a small touch, but it didn't really cross below. So that's why we didn't close the trade here, but we closed it here when the um, um, MEC, I'm um, sorry, the, the stochastic 14.44 then um, topped out here in this case. And uh, so there's the next one. This was a very juicy trade, obviously. So you have again histogram bigger zero. You have this um, signal line above zero. You have the percent K um, crossing above the percent D, and then this is really um, showing a very overbought market environment. Still, the cross below that happened here. So, which means that you started the trade somewhere here within this region around two, what is it, 260 to 60, yeah, 255 to 60 around, uh, and kept the trade open for, well, it's probably something like nearly a month two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, and the trade was taken out then here, somewhere in this region, slightly above 300 USD per share. Yeah, and this is, this is how the setup um, um, works in the real world, in fact. Um, and that's it, in fact. That, that's, the, that's the idea behind this. So let's sum all this up now. Um, the MACD is, again, a trend-following, trend-capturing momentum indicator, while the slow stochastic can mainly be considered a momentum indicator. Still, both of them are working well together. Um, in combination, they can be used for so-called trend confirmation strategies. And um, in, in my personal opinion, I look for trend-stable bullish and bearish markets like blue chip equities, for example, but also FX, precious metal, or precious metals to trade the strategy within these asset classes. So what you have seen here is, even though it's a very optimal um, example, Apple currently is a very trend-stable market. And um, this is something which is also true right now in the market environment. Um, how, do, how do you find, or how, what, what can you say, um, how can you say whether, whether an asset is trend-stable um, or has a tendency to trend strongly in a direction? Um, that's something you most of the time find for yield sensitive um, currency pairs, but also um, um, assets like, like, like precious metals in this case and gold. So also gold is very yield sensitive. JPY, for example, current momentum, uh, which you can see, look at dollar JPY trade, for example. Um, you will see like a parabolic move. The same is true for gold. Look at gold right now, it's parabolic. And I've heard plenty of people saying something like, oh, well, but probably we are, we are a little extended here on the upside and, and we're about to probably see a bounce rather sooner or later. I can fully understand that. And the first intention, it's, most of the time it's, it's natural, it's human in my opinion. You say, well, it's so, risen so far um, right now, I don't think that there's so much potential on the upside anymore. And this is the interesting thing. Such a strategy um, where you use an indicator, in this case, the MACD, respectively, the slow stochastic, for generating the signal, the trade is kept open till the signal is generated. So there's no motiv um, um, motivation, no emotions being, influ um, 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 being included here within your trading process. So <clears throat> when you look at um, trend-stable equities like blue-chip equities, FX in general also, look at the current environment on the downside in EURUSD, for example, but also look again, gold, JPY, all crosses here. Um, it's, it's fair to state that here you have an environment which is very favorable 
which is usually something from a trends perspective, which works extremely well with the MACD and the slow stochastic under range bound conditions. Believe me, it won't work. Oh, I'm sorry. It won't really work. But um, this is something to, something to keep in mind here. When looking at these assets, um, it's from time to time very difficult to trade in direction of the current momentum. Um, but, and this is the beautiful thing about this, you don't need to think anymore because the indicator in this case um, is delivering the signal. So you just need to look at the indicator, in this case the MACD or, and, or the slow stochastic after the um, um, initial buy or sell signal was generated and then keep the trade open as long as the indicator um, signals you to do so. Um, and this is something where, where yeah, this, this, this strategy in this case can uh, um, 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 play out its, its strength, in fact. Don't forget to join us next time. So last week on Monday, it was my turn. Um, now on Monday, it's Marcus. Paul's still off, but um, he will return. Um, I think in Monday and then the next week after that. So at the first day event in March, in fact. And uh, Marcus will teach you more about how to successfully trade support and resistance levels. Uh, including an introduction to support and resistance levels, support and resistance level trading strategies he will um, show you, and useful indicators in support and resistance trading. Probably, I haven't seen his um, uh, presentation yet, but probably he will also dig deeper into the MACD and the uh, slow stochastic again. Um, could you imagine that at least? <clears throat> time is Monday, 24th of February, 2020, um, 2 p.m. London time, same as today. And um, so since you're here now, you, you're registered for the webinar, check your inbox for the webinar link. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a thumb up here if you enjoyed what, you, um, what you've just seen. Ask your questions in the chat box below, in the YouTube um, on chat box. And um, register on admiralmarkets.com and educations, the webinar is top here and then under trading spotlight. Um, and uh, yeah, feel also free to join our Traders Yard community, further details in general on um, strategies, but also on analysis, on uh, the, the uh, news or important news releases, a Forex calendar in this case. Um, you can find everything um, on admiralmarkets.com. Here you have further contact details from Admiral for further questions in regards to trading. Um, feel free to, to ask the questions. And, and we mentioned this at the beginning already, regular regulation. So that's why we have to now show you here the risk disclaimer. Um, yeah, enjoy reading it and uh, have, a nice, have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself and talk to you again next week, Friday. Um, I really look forward to it. See you and bye-bye.